did it. At, we did our first live we stream. We actually was the only one that we hired a specialist to come and do it, and it was the biggest failure. We, we <laughs> That's so, amazing. Like, lesson learned. Um, no, I wasn't. I mean, it was, it was a pretty huge... We sold huge, a lot of tickets, yeah. <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> and um, we did it on our front lawn, and we had some challenges and whatever, but like... Um, I think technically know, it was the worst one, though. Technically we had some challenges, but we, we managed to eventually, refine you know, it. refine it and figure out and learn some things. And then moving forward, we ended up expanding that into like a full concert series and getting using our space to help other artists to have a show so that looked cool. really good yeah. and they could sell tickets to and... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a really tough couple of years. Like, we're all pretty pretty yeah. emotionally and, uh, drained and, and fatigued and exhausted. Especially, especially with especially what's been happening moment. recently. But yeah. to, to touch on that, you know, um, this, this ability to adapt is actually innate in all of us. Mm. And in, in this industry, this is probably in some ways the best industry to have been in for the last period to deal with what we're going through because the music industry is a constantly evolving industry mm. and it's been the, it's been the number one industry that evolves in the most catastrophically different ways and i use catastrophically like like quite importantly because there have been dramatic changes that have happened over the last 20 15 years where our industry has had to change on its feet it wasn't like we could just stop and go like, oh, okay, hang on, we're not going to build cars anymore uh, just while we quickly figure out how to change the combustion engine. We had to figure out how to completely change our, our industry from being a recording-based industry and a, and a, a product sales-based industry. I mean, like, you guys do realize that the music industry used to be all about product sales. Vinyl it was CDs. not about like, artists. It was about selling a product. And it either came in a box this big or a box this big. And then that all changed like almost overnight, and went to being like, well, it's not in a box. And if it's not in a box, how do we sell it? Oh, we don't know how to sell it. And the music industry actually like basically collapsed and then slowly has figured its way out into this streaming landscape, which is a totally different thing because there's no box. And any other industry would not have been able to figure that out. You try and tell me how you figure out a, like how to change the motor industry from being one where you can buy a car to being one where you can only rent a car. Or you they can, would be like, or it's like, we don't know how to do it. Or it's like simulator cars yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. like goggles. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All of the car industries would fail. They would just fail. They'd be like, it's not going to happen. The, so, mm? so just a quick question. Sorry, uh, interjecting again. But I know we've adapted and we had to adapt. And it's a, it's a cool thing. I mean, it's, it's an easier way to supposedly make money, I suppose. You know, you're selling downloads, you're selling streams. We don't want to talk about the splits because that's a whole three-hour lecture Oof. by itself. But, I mean, do you, I, I, one thing I miss, I miss crate digging, I miss going to record stores, I miss going through vinyls, the feel, the touch, the smell, um, mm. you know, owning CDs, it's kind of like almost this tangible thing, well, it is tangible, obviously, but it's this, it's this thing that you'll remember, there's a, a specific time and a place and a date, and you can still get that with songs, and you can get that with concerts, but, I mean, do you miss putting out a physical? No. Right. <laughs> That negated everything. No. <laughs> no. Like, and I don't miss it because they don't miss it. Okay. So I don't care. Uh, it's like, and that's the whole point, is that the point that I'm saying about evolving and moving forward and us as creatives, what we're so good at doing and why we were able to, in two days, someone who's never like, done any live streaming was able to figure it out, because that's who we are. We are the people who are too creative to fit into a normal box. So for us to evolve forward, it's like, yeah, no problem. Cool, what do you want me to do tomorrow? Oh, okay, cool. We're going to do that, fine. Whereas an accountant would be like, I can't, I can't deal with that. Like, I'm sorry, I'm actually going to have to go and take a six-month sabbatical Look, and try and figure out whether my life is going to change. There's a you know? different kind of artist, you know? Um, yeah. And it doesn't take away from the fact that, like, owning CDs and vinyl is, is if that's what you dig, wonderful. There's a lot of... There's but it's a lot, not what the well, model yeah, is. Yeah, there was a lot of, like magic that could go could be justified more to go into an album mm. like for example we decided on our second album we were feeling very overwhelmed by being in studio and well we were feeling quite overwhelmed by the success of the first album yeah, our first album i guess maybe. just to touch on this was an 11 track cd that we made it was our first electronic record that we'd ever made we jules and i had been in like an acoustic band prior to that and 
we decided basically, what, two years before that we were going to do electronic music because we'd sort of forecast that the, the scene was changing. And we were struggling to get gigs as a band. It was like the venues were closing. People didn't want to book bands because there was too many like costs implied in stages, sound techs, all this backline, all this stuff. We were like, how do we put a live show into a club? Because there are loads of clubs. Let's figure out a way to do that. So that's what we went with. We then started gigging that a lot, and then people decided they wanted, can we buy your music? We actually like what you're doing. So we sat down, we made an album, and we were like, we didn't know what music we were going to make. We are just making like music. We'd like vomit a song out one day, like play with it, be like, oh, it's a pretty good song. We'd vomit out a drum and bass song the next day. Like we had no idea what kind of style or genre we wanted our little band to be, because at that point it didn't even have a name. It even had a lot of vocalists on it. It had like five different Five vocalists different vocalists. We were like, cool, we'll just make songs. And then we were like, okay, we're going to put it out on a CD. And we, we met Carl Anderson, who's a, actually now the head of Apple or Africa. And uh, he had a record label called Just Music, and he really liked what he did, and he believed in, in, in the album. This was at a time where you had to have a label to get into distribution. So and this radio. was pre- Radio like, was so important. Radio was so important. <laughs> it was like a make or break if you were on 5FM, and it was this hard was to like get on 5FM. This like 2011, OK? Was, yeah. So like before any of you were born. <laughs> um, and we thought, like, OK, we're going to release the CD, and then the, pu the radio stations and the public will listen to it. They'll pick up which songs they like, and we'll know which genre we must then make. Maybe it'll be, maybe we'd be a drum and bass band moving on, you know? Hmm? Well, this was prior to that. This was even before this was that. Before, so this this was, was before that. So we, we managed to break through into radio just, I don't know, because we had songs that they liked. Um, well, mm, we went on, we actually, we, we submitted Taking It Easy to 5FM and they, they didn't want to playlist it. Well, everyone else playlisted Everyone this. else was playlisting it. And then I actually, Ben and I went there and we just walked into the office in Joburg and yeah. we were like, hi. Can we speak to the music compiler? And he was sitting at this guy called Sot. He was sitting there, we were like, sorry, why don't you like our song? And he was like, And he was like, oh, how did you like, get in here? Who are you? <laughs> and he was like, um, yeah, it's just a bit chilled for five. But this was obviously before there was that split. So they, they didn't have a local content cap. They were like, at all. They it were playing the American Top 40, and if you were lucky, you would get in on a local band. And he was like, oh, I don't mind it, but it's just a bit relaxed for our station. And we were like, so what do you suggest? He's like, if you just made it a bit faster, and maybe the synths could be louder. So we went back to studio, we put it up one BPM, and we put the synths up two d dB, and we sub resubmitted it, and he was he like, was it's like, perfect. perfect. <laughs> it, Done. No person could tell the difference, I tell you, but anyway. So that was the start, was and the by start. the end of that album, we'd had nine top 40 singles off that, off that record. So all the of most, the genres is the most got singles of, a, of an album in South Africa ever. So they all got picked, and then we were like, but oh, the problem now, being, like, now what the hell do now we do? Now we didn't know what to do, because we didn't have, a, like, a song or sound. We were not going to make electro swing. We were going to make this. We were like, a, it, all pick, it all got picked up. So we're going to just do the same thing again, like, make a bunch of songs and see. And we kind of decided that's what we would do. But to come back to your point, and, so yeah. we decided that we would go and do something crazy. Yeah, and we went and recorded the whole album outside mm. in Namibia, in the desert. Um, we took two weeks took a whole packed studio, took solar panels, took a film crew, and we went out and we recorded it across the whole country, like from Dead Flay, right through up to Into the, the Fish River Canyon. We recorded on the Skeleton Coast, we recorded oh. in Itosha, we recorded everywhere, and we just recorded it outside, and it was the best experience of my life. But we wouldn't have done that, the, the whole reason I'm saying this, we wouldn't have done that, gone to so much effort, if we if, weren't if making like an album, album, you know, like a beautiful body of work. Like now, if you ask me, do you want to do that, I'd be like, no way. <laughs> you we have just make songs. <laughs> but actually, in some ways, it's, it's kind sad. of gone full circle because yeah. when we started, we were just making songs. And so we're back, yeah. we're back there now just making songs because the album is, is less important. Yeah. Um, Which is kind of sad in a way, is what I'm saying. It is and it isn't. You know? Because at the same time, then you're not like just putting like random songs onto a, a CD or a vinyl just to yeah. bring it up to like 10 songs yeah, so that the, you can the tracks, release yeah. it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and you can also now, the beauty is that you, you've got years of work that you could perform whenever you wanted to. And Do you know what's also is tricky about the singles game? I've, I've just realized this now. Every time you release a single, it's like you're releasing an album. Because you have to do an artwork, you have, which would have been for the whole album. You have to do like a press tour. You have to do a music video. You have to do like... All a, of the like launch launching things that you want to do, like it literally, it's like yeah. every three months you're releasing an album. So in a way, people think it's like less work, but it's not because you're doing it 
every three months. Yep. And it's just as much work. And the other thing is, of course, everyone, you know, there's that saying in the industry, it's the same with your, whether you're a recording engineer or, or in your case as artists and producers, it's you're only as good as your last gig or your last set or your last mix. And mm -hmm. so the problem is you, you have to like basically look at what you did last time and go, how do, how do we, we make that better? That better? <laughs> yeah. Are we making this sound too bleak for you guys? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> because look, the other side of that is like, sure, the landscape's constantly evolving, so you have to constantly be on your toes. You, you're constantly having to recreate and, and release new material because that's what the audience requires. But all of that actually is also an incredible opportunity to have fun because every single element of that is challenging in a potentially fun way. So long as you can have the right mindset for it, yeah. Yes. And he even did it through one set with the end of the airways mod line, where he was he actually did that for those bands who want to be more of an art project. If you subscribe to them, you know, we'll make exclusive stuff for that you would just subscribe for this time frame and get exclusive merch from us and then there's that sort of collective thing if you're looking for it. Yes. But you know, if that then again it's about to what you want it to be, the art thing or the career or how you make that balance, what you pay. Exactly. On, on your point, sorry, I just found exactly. something I, ha I had to, to quote it. There's this amazing quote. Um, it's Hunter S. Thompson, um, and it says, The music business is a dark plastic hallway where pimps and thieves run free and good men die like dogs. There's also a negative side. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it might sound all, all negative and everything, but it's actually amazing because one thing it does do is upskill you. In, in ways like... I think musicians, and I was actually having this chat because like, we, we're developing a, a young artist at the moment on his live set, a um, guy called Will Lindley. You might have heard of him. He's an um, incredibly talented songwriter, very young. And um, he was chatting, he phoned me up one day and he was like, Jules, was like, I don't really know, you know, should I delve into this? Should I like give up my studies? Should I not? I'm not too sure what to do. Can you help me? And I was like, Yo, you're asking me quite a deep, you know, I don't want to like <laughs> just uh, tell you what to do. But I said, look, the thing is, I'll tell you what my experience is is that if you, if you now said to me I couldn't do music, there's about a million other things I could do and do well because I know how to be adaptable, I know how to be an entrepreneur, I know how to, like, I know how to make it rain, I know how to make something out of nothing. No other industry in the world can teach you that, in my opinion. Like, you maybe go, the film industry. Maybe, but yeah, maybe the film industry. But you can, literally, you can literally do anything. If you can survive the music industry, you can do anything. Yeah. And that is like, that in itself is worth its weight in gold. No, How many of you are artists? How many of you are purely tech? And okay. like recording, so it's like engineering? A, well, purely tech would be that. So like it's like a 60-40 split. Yeah. Okay. So between that mix, a lot of what we've spoken about is more artist-centric. But from a technical perspective, it's actually no different because even though perhaps you're not creating the product, you're servicing an industry that is all about that product. And it's as much your responsibility to stay ahead of the trends, to be at the forefront of what tech is doing, which is what we'll get into in a little bit, so that what you're adding to the industry isn't just about like, oh, okay, cool, I've got a 16-channel desk and I have, oh, I've got one thing of sweepable mids because this is what you know I learnt on. So as much as the artists are having to push themselves to figure out ways to grow and to adapt and to be relevant in an industry, and I don't just mean that from a perspective of your your the style of your art, I mean it relevant from the from a much broader sense, the tech guys have got to stay relevant too. Don't sit on your laurels and be like, oh, cool, well, this is what I got taught in college, so this is where it's got to be done. Like, it's as much your responsibility to push the industry forward. And if that means like, experimenting with new tech ideas, figuring out how to implement different technologies into live shows, whether it's streaming, whether it's broadcasting, whether it's like, taking recording elements and putting them into the show, helping out with lighting, figuring out different ways of going like, oh, okay, well, we've got a projector. A projector is actually an amazing light source. Like, flip, there's an old 
Mackie 101 like moving head there. I wonder if I could like connect the projector into the same frame that the light chassis used to be and I'm going to create a moving head projector. So you could basically take a video footage and just be like, wow, like this all over the place. You know? Someone's um, going to so do that now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, <laughs> right over there. <laughs> as much as we're talking to the artists about the different elements that there are from a, from a creative perspective of, of making music or art or whatever you want to call it, there is too that same responsibility to all the tech guys. Don't just sit back and be like, oh yeah, cool, I can come VJ your gig and like, I'm gonna pull some stuff off the internet and like, do it. You know, like, be creative. Push the boundaries because that's your responsibility of how our industry moves forward. I mean, that, thank you. I cannot thank you for saying that enough because I think it's the one thing that, and look, our students are generally very good at that. I must give you guys props, but it's very important that you learn the rules and break the rules at the same time because that way you're going to push it forward. You've learned something new. Your music might sound, it will, will sound different, but your mixing or, your, or you know, the technical side of it will also be different and that yeah. will make you unique and that makes you hireable as well in its own way, shape or form because people will remember it. I, mean, I didn't go to college. So I didn't, I didn't have the opportunity that you had. I had a subscription to Sound on Sound magazine. And Which we the still do. The physical one. Yeah. We, no, we still, we still do, by the way. You yes. have... 19 epic, epic, years. epic magazine. Yeah. Um, and so I learned a lot through that, and I learned a lot through making mistakes. So my first uh, sort of mixed sessions, I would have sometimes four compressors on one channel, because I didn't actually know what a compressor did. But what I was doing, whether it was compression or not, I was moving stuff around to get a sound that I wanted. And ultimately, what it taught me was that there are no rules, However, if I'd had a lecturer who could have said to me, like, listen, I see what you're trying to do here. Like, it's not wrong, because there is nothing that's wrong, just by the way. But you could have done it with one compressor and just done this and then had, you know, done some parallel, like, wet mixing here to give you the same thing. I would have been like, flip, thanks, Bri. You know, it took me like half an hour to make that sound like work. I, I, I think you know? just on that, like there's a, there's a strange, um, I'm just thinking back and I just thought of this now. There's this, there's a strange like cultural phenomenon that I think with like, call it Gen Z's or guys that are coming up now, um, which, you know, like I look back on our career when we started, we didn't know what we were doing. And, you know, like Ben came to me, he's like, okay, I want to do this electronic thing. So um, I've booked us a show. And I was like, what do you mean you've booked a show? Uh, two weeks from now, we're going to play, we're going to we're gonna open for Sean Duvet, who's now running Ultra. We're going to open for Sean Duvet at like Water Bar in Claremont. But we're playing a nightclub. It's night just, club. Behind, just behind Tenerife. Tenerife. It's, it's a nightclub. It's where the DJ throws down like black eyed peas. And we're like, and I was like, Ben, you must be crazy. And we didn't have an electronic song. We were making stuff with drum kits. And anyway, and in two weeks we literally sat for two weeks every day and we made a set we learned ableton live we learned ableton he learned how to produce he learned how to put a kick drum there and like you know he learned how to make it and within two weeks we had a set we played the show we got the dance floor kind of dancing not amazing but like enough we had more people on the dance floor than sean did enough oh Sorry, Shawnee. <laughs> love you um enough that it was like okay maybe we can do i think we still get more forward. people on the dance floor than oh, sean man. Um, anyway, so, so <laughs> I'm not going to deal with the like, I, I feel like there's this cultural <laughs> barrier to entry with Generation Z, yeah. which is like, Yo, this is a statement. It's yeah, a statement, eh? but it's true. I feel like they, and, I, and I feel like it's not even their fault. There's so much social pressure from the social media thing, which wasn't really that prevalent when we were there, to like to be brilliant straight away. That no one wants to take the risk to try and fail. Yeah, like we rolled into yeah. that gig, like going like, we could, look, this could be an this epic could be failure. A, like epic. epic. Like, like it could be like one gig and like everyone yeah, was, goes, you may never get booked again. You know, exactly. <laughs> and everyone's like, talk, talk of the town. Next thing there was this band who played on my word. They were so shocking. Like, you know, but no one is prepared to try and fail, you know? Um, and even now working with Will, like I understand that a little bit more, you know, he's come and he's like so stressed. He wants to be as good as like Matthew Moore from day one. And I'm like, and he wants that, and he expects that of himself. That's huge and pressure. And he's pushing himself. You know, he's pushing as, himself yeah. to achieve that. We're trying to help him do it, but at the same time, I'm like, no, dude, suck a little bit. It's okay. Like, you know, you're making great music. Like, no one will care if you sing about out of tune, and you don't have the best energy. And like, obviously, it's great if you do, but if you don't, like, it's all right. You like know? our rule from day one, from a live gigging perspective, was walk off stage 
And whoever comes up to you and says, like, dude, that was so rad, you go like, shot, 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 thanks. What didn't you like? Yeah. I don't care about what you liked. I need to know what you didn't like yeah. because those are the things that I need to change. So if you're engineering a gig, you need to go to the audience and be like, hey, like, what would you have done? Like, could you hear everything? What would you have done differently? If you are not seeking critical feedback, you're not growing. Nobody needs to pat you on the back. Like, forget about it. You don't need a thousand likes on your Instagram post, guys. Like, forget oh, about that stuff. Sorry. You know? Naughty jewels. Like, oh. the real world does not care about how many nonsense likes you have. They care about how good you are at your craft. Mm -hmm. Like, because what actually happens is you go like, oh, check, this engineer, like, he's got so many likes on his post, we should hire him. And then you hire him, and then he comes and he does a shit job. And you <laughs> never hire him again. So don't fall for the, like, the trap of thinking that social media is the place where you're going to be successful. You can get your foot in the door with social media. Absolutely. I've seen it so many times. Guys buying like, followers, and then they get booked for a gig, and then they play the gig, and you're like, wow, dude, that was epically cuck. You know? <laughs> um, and now there are you know, people who will do... Um, How's you know, the same person? Really wants really to get hold of us. us. They're clearly not watching the live stream. No, where are you? <laughs> Bless. Bless. <laughs> no, but you're so right. I mean, I, I, you know, speaking from experience in the dubstep scene, like, I just never forget, like, these folks came out of nowhere. We've all been crafting for, like, 15 years, DJing, you know, thousands of hours, carrying records up, waiting room stairs, you know, the whole mm -hmm. work. Finally find a genre. Next thing, some kid rocks up with 20,000 likes on his Facebook page. You, hi you know, he gets booked by a promoter. He gets there, and you're like... Oh, all your followers are from South America. I see. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay. <laughs> and exactly that happened. It you know, um, falls flat. You know, big but and chilly. <laughs> I must actually ask, seeing as, seeing as we're, we're moving forward, and I don't want to, you know, I know you guys no, are busy people. Um, but what I would dig to do is, is seeing as, you know, so many people that I know have, have um, said that they've sat with you and watched you in a studio, and it's probably like the most ingratiating experience they've ever had. Uh, by the way, if you haven't heard that before. Uh, um, are you sure that I mean most? <laughs> Soul Distro, no, I'm joking. No, we just, we're quite intense in studio, actually. That's a, that, geez, that's a... Um, we're intense, we're intense in geez, studio. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> Damn. No, Ben's an amazing producer, but um, he doesn't mince his words when you, if you're ever recording with him. Or but that's a him. good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. He wants it's to get the best performance, but it's uh, scary for some people. But finish your finish. No, no, no. So, no, I thought it was brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> that's also, no, so I, I thought maybe, it's, I, I mean, seeing you very graciously brought your, your, your laptop through. Maybe we could have a look at some of the ways you shape and craft your sounds, how okay. you perhaps yeah. use our Ableton, and what I would Are really like. Are you looking like. for a recording perspective? Well, from let's, a live let's, no, no, just let's, from, let's, actually from... Let's touch actually, on both. Actually, actually from both. And also, if you wouldn't mind, maybe I know you guys obviously like hand in hand, but how do you influence what Ben's yeah, doing yeah. so that you guys can... Uh, oh, sorry, Ben. <laughs> Uh. No, to be honest, to be honest, I, 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 like, I, I don't know or pretend I know at all what Ben does or how he does it. I, it's, I'm a songwriter, I'm a lyricist. Jules I'm wants to hear a fully mastered, finished, <laughs> completed song within five yeah, minutes of a, conception. It is, it is a problem. I'm not very, I'm not very We are like sitting there like there, agonizing yeah. over what kick drum to use and Jules is going room. like, I, I mean, track. like, why have you not finished yet? <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, but it's also that kind of drive that also pushes you on. So yeah. it's not a bad thing. So yeah, as a songwriter, I've got I've got the curse of when I when I write something, I hear the whole thing finished in my head straight away. That's um, yeah, <laughs> and not <laughs> because and not because I sometimes struggle with the process of of where it could possibly go because maybe it's not what I'm hearing in my head is actually not necessarily the, the best way it could go and. Um, where I think as a band we do definitely butt heads, all three of us, is um, my impatience with, with the process and the boys being very willing and keen to explore like all the directions it can go. If something, if they start playing with something and I think it sounds whack, I'm like straight away like, what, why? Why are we doing that? That sounds weird. And then they're like, just keep just quiet. Trust the process. <laughs> yeah. so like just pipe down. And I'm learning. It's not a, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. I still, it's still not easy for me. Um, but I'm definitely learning. Like for a good example is our latest single, actually, Bird of Paradise. Yes, that was, um, 
Awesome, by the way. Thank you. Which it is awesome. Which it started is awesome. Awesome. No, it, it really, really is awesome. It really didn't happen because of me. Because Charles was being a <laughs> um, because troll. I, because I was being a bit of a troll. <laughs> we were in London and there was like... Uh, we were and we started off this. like this producer and I were making this groove that sounds a little bit like... This like slow, like key zumba, like whatever. And immediately I just go like, what are you doing, guys? This does not sound like our band. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, this is, is this, are we making hip hop? And I'm or? going like, this is a fat beat. I'm fucking loving it. I think that's amazing. Okay. It actually didn't. It started with a. No, that was what Dimitri was working on. I was working yeah, on Yeah, okay, I wasn't in your group. I was listening to what Dimitri was working on, and he was working so on this. He was like, working on this thing. This like thing, which it sounded super hip hop and slow. Let's just pull up the melodics. It'll be like something like this. It's probably not going to be this part. No, no. Wasn't that part? It was like a bass thing, I think. Was it the bass part? Um, anyway, it was this like really like wow. crunchy sounding. So this is quite a this is quite a big session. I know. I was like, dude, this is amazing. Sorry, Jules, you were so sorry. Yeah, this. Oh, wow. So he's making this, and I'm like, okay, doesn't and sound I, like anything. And I'm going before. like, who cares? Um, it's good. <laughs> a death. Like because yeah. that's that's I as I said earlier, like we don't try and make music like anything. We we just like the songs arrive. Mm in our minds or in our space in the studio. And we're not setting out to make an I'm a piano song because I'm a piano is big right now. Like, sure, we can go do that. But it's like, even in, even in probably in the instance of us going, sitting down and going like, okay, let's try and make an I'm a piano song, we'll probably make something else. Because it just naturally flows that way. And we would rather go with the flow of it because for whatever reason, that's what's worked for us. And we're still here, and every other song that you've ever heard by Good Luck has been made that way. Mm. But um, my point is basically for the first, like, two hours of the session, I was sitting bit drop lip at the back of the room going, like, I don't know what so I'm going to do with this. So to answer, to know, answer the anyway. question, like, like, there's... What's great about that is that it pushes everyone else in the room to have absolute conviction and care about what they're doing. Because otherwise, they could just be like, oh, she doesn't really like it, cool, let's move on. But I don't really care about it. So either you care about it, and you go like, no, you're wrong. I'm going to fight, fight you on this, and we are going to do this, because I believe in it. Yeah. Or you go like, oh, you know what, you're right, it should. So having a naysayer is not a bad thing. It actually can be sometimes really empowering. What I do believe, though, is that you can't polish a turd. <laughs> like, if you, and I've actually said this for based on my entire career, like, if you are not getting the performance that you need, you either need to go away and rehearse and practice and develop whatever, the, whatever whether it's an instrument or a vocal or a production thing. You have to bring, you can't fix it in post. We can tweak it in post, but like, you're not going to fix it, mm. you know? Like, and sure, with synths, there's certain things you can do, and you can take a MIDI riff, and it'll like, sound terrible on a piano, and you can put it onto a Wurlitzer, and all of a sudden, it sounds like, wow, that actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'm kind of happy about that. Like, that's not polishing a turd. That's just like, refining, that's yeah. just refining something that actually was potentially a good idea in the first place. It just wasn't being like, shaped in the right way. Um, but to talk about like, the technical stuff, um, if we can just... Yeah. Slam straight into that. Look, can I just interrupt you for two seconds? Yes, I just please. Wanna, the, the, the first day I came to Cape Audio College, when I came to study here in 2004, uh, Ray Diaga, the owner, he stepped out, but um, he was my first ever lecturer. And the first thing he said to us, and it's been a saying in this college for apparently like 25 years, is you cannot polish a turd. There and I, it, is, it is, just remember it and... Take it to heart. I think everyone's probably heard somebody say that in this college. He still says it, eh? yeah. I it's think awesome. the, tr the tricky thing is like the tricky thing is like turds can be subjective. <laughs> you know what is what a turd? Mean, like, um, what is one person's turd is another person's <laughs> not turd. <laughs> oh. So that's also that's also there are layers to that statement, but yeah, I I, I agree. I think Sorry. it's also just from a perspective of like delivery. Ben is very, as a producer, he's very, 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 very strict on intention when it comes to delivery, specifically with vocals. Like, or actually anyone playing an instrument, like, there's a feeling. And it's a total esoteric 
thing. But and it's not necessarily even like you were the most tuneful or you were the most pitch perfect or the most your phrasing was good and your timing was good. It's not about that. It's about like, did I believe you when you sang that thing? Did I? Did you tell did you me the story? Me. Did I? Did I understand what you were trying to get across? And if not, it. Don't, and that's something that like you need to understand from both a technical perspective and from an artistry perspective is that like if it's not making you feel something it's probably not right so don't just accept it like don't be like oh, okay cool i got the take that i wanted the little bit of foley that i got there that's like for this thing of like this you know person rushing past someone bumping their shoulder sure i like got like that thing and it like kind of works and like like no but one thing I will say, a little secret for you guys, something I've learned like over all the years, I don't, I don't, I'm sure you know this already, but if you're recording a vocal and it sounds cheap, but it's a good what, vocal. What do you mean by cheap? Or cheap, you know what I mean. Just there's something about it that's a bit like cheap sounding. I can't explain it better than that. It's something that just this, it doesn't sound like it was made in. If you're going to you know, say to everyone that you just like make it a bit lazier. Yes, that's like, what you do. You <laughs> drag no. it just slightly backwards. And you push it and no, then listen to it again. No, because the, the, the converse of that is that maybe it's too lazy and that's why it sounds cheap in the first place and you're just making it sound cheaper. <laughs> it's not a blanket rule. No, the thing is, but it is sometimes that works. People often rush the vocal, <laughs> especially in South Africa. They like to be ahead of the thing. Okay. Anyway, just a, just a little tip. Try it. Should we, should, it we it. Should, we, should we analyze your vocal and see whether you're singing ahead of the beat or not? I have a feeling we're opening yeah. a can of worms here. <laughs> I did. I have already yeah, shifted yeah. it to make it sound already. more expensive. No, you just made me. No, in this song, I just sound like T Pain. He just yeah. auto tuned me to death. Jeez, but that's also why. T Pain. Back to the jungle. T Pain. Look, what Jules is referring to there is feel. Yeah. If the feel's not right from a timing perspective, you can shift it around. But if the, if the way that the delivery is happening sounds, doesn't like move you, get the, get the, then for heaven's sake, get the performer to do it again. There is nothing that I hate more than engineers, and this goes out to all of you, who just go like, yeah, great take, let's, let's run that again. It's like 99% of the time in this country, you don't get to work with a producer. We did, a, we did an album in the middle of this year with some of the top jazz musicians from, from Cape Town, and it was the first time they'd ever worked with a producer. It was the first time they'd ever had anyone in the room go like, dude, I like what you're doing, but like, do it differently. <laughs> like, thanks, that was a great, that was a, a great gift to the room, but like, we need <laughs> but to tweak sucked. that and change it. Um, um, also, the, the first uh, non Jules vocalist that we worked with, which was a guy called Matthew Gold, uh, for Taking It Easy, actually. He wrote the song, and in my mind, I was like, first of all, this was the one time I had to convince Ben, because he wasn't sure. He was like, no, no, no. And I was like, no, just trust me. Give me a day with this beat. I'm going to make something. So I wrote that song, and then I was like, now I'll imagine it with like John Legend singing it. And he was like, okay, cool. And then we found like, a South African, pretty, pretty good. South African version of John Legend's Probably would have done better if we'd gone with John Legend. <laughs> got him in studio, and, um, and he got like, he recorded for like eight hours straight because Ben was not happy, not happy, not happy, not happy, not happy. And then, but at the end of the day, he got the product he wanted. But it and was bless a Matthew, winner. because it was not easy for him. But like, we're crafting something, and this is what I want you all to understand. Once you've released that song, you cannot change it in the ears of the listener ever again. It's done. They've heard it that way, and they might hear a remix of it and be like, oh, cool, that's a different version. They will never forget, and they will never be re-impacted with the first time that they heard that song. So whatever is in there has got to be the way that you want it to be, for the, for the listener, because you're not making, you guys know that you're not making music for yourselves, hey? You do know that, right? Do you know that? Okay, cool. Because <laughs> you're not going to listen to your music again. Like, Trust. you make a song, <laughs> I don't go back and be like, ah, oh, hey, yo, it's a good song, eh? Jeez, I quite like this one. No, I've never done that You're with making the music, music. <laughs> for everyone else. Yeah. So your responsibility is to them not to you. Sure, you're expressing your craft and, you're, and you're the conduit for your art, but your responsibility is to them. You need to make them enjoy the, the art that you're making. Unless you're just making it for yourself, in which case don't worry about them, and that's fine. But then don't expect them to enjoy it. If they enjoy it, wonderful, but don't expect it. Because you haven't crafted it to help them have a wonderful opportunity. 
And that's your responsibility as an artist and as a technician. When you're mixing in the studio or in the live environment, your responsibility is to the audience. That is who matters. They're the ones who've paid to be there. They're the ones who've got out of their homes and come and stood there. Also, and it doesn't mean that you have to make pop music. Like, you know, it's not you, a, I'm it's not still, saying pop music. You can make any genre, ah. but like, yeah. he's just saying. If you're mixing a jazz band, if you're mixing Miley Cyrus, the same responsibility oh, applies. The audience are the people who are the most important people. Sure, the artists want to have a good time and you want to make sure that they're like, comfortable on stage. But ultimately, if you're not making the audience enjoy what you're doing, you're failing at your job whether you're an artist or a technician, or a record label, or a yeah. producer. Um, Fans are key, I suppose. It's the where did we get to? <laughs> do we want to talk about plugins? Do we want to talk about, what do, we, what do you guys want to talk about? Yeah. Uh-oh, here we go. Josh, what are you up to? <laughs> What a lovely question. Oh, that's a great question. I don't think there's a formula. I think it depends on the song. I've had, we've had ideas where I've, where I've been driving like on Hospital Bend and something just popped into my head. I love singing. I never play the radio because I always just sing like, and I have my watch and I record myself. And I love, for some reason when I'm driving, things just pop into my head and like, I'll have an idea that stems and then I'll come to Ben and be like, listen to this vocal idea and then he will imagine where that can go and we start from that place. Or you've heard a song that's really inspired you and you want to make something similar, but like slightly different. Or, I mean, we do a lot of these co-writing sessions, which is a, a very pressurized situation to put yourself into, where you go into a room with like two other people, one other person, and you're like, hi, nice to meet you for the very first time. Generally for us, foreign person that we're meeting in Holland or something, let's write a song. You've just met them and by the end of the day, you, you're expecting to have at least some direction of a song. How many of you as artists have co-written in this room? How many of you have co-written with other people in this room? So one, two. Cool, so uh, as, have any of you done a song together? Why not? Why are you not co-writing with each other every day? Why are you not learning from each other? Mal, come, there's a whole room of people here. Each one of you should be collaborating with each other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's you know, true. That is like we're stuck in our studio on our own. I get to collab with Jules like every day. It's like, I mean, it's lovely. Don't get me wrong. But like, no, you know, but we, but nice the, to be able to like have some variation. But, the, but, the, but putting yourself in a, in, a, in a pressurized situation like that, where it's like, okay, guys, in a day we're going to do something. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's absolutely rubbish. We're going to have. We're going to have. Don't wait for your lecturer to like tell no, you what to do. No, just do it. Just do it. Like that. Like go up to someone and be like, Yo, you make like death metal. I make. I'm a piano. Let's like. Let's see what happens if we like Ooh. make a death metal on a piano <laughs> That song. is a whole new Josh, genre waiting Josh, like, there's let, a challenge. Let me, let, me, let me put it to you guys like this. What does it matter if it fails? Piano donks and then... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never know. But to answer your question, uh, both, of those, both of those things happen. happen yeah. it's, it's a discovery and it's a creation. And sometimes it starts with a discovery and sometimes it starts with a creation. It just doesn't, you don't know. Like right now, I, I, I like long story, but I, I've decided I wanted to do, I want to do like a tropical harsh remix of Kokomo by the Beatles. And I'm like, every day it's I'm It's not like, by the Beatles. Not by the Beatles, sorry, by Beach Boys. Sorry, Beach Boys. My brain. And I, and I went to, and I've been going to Ben like, every other day going, Kokomo, Kokomo, Kokomo. Well, and like, I want to do Kokomo, you know? And I've got this idea and I've got this total again. I've got this whole like, I can hear the finished song in my head and I'm like, I know how I want it to sound. But at the same time, it might be completely different when I get into studio and like, it, it might not sound exactly how I'm picturing it. So wait, you are going to do this, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, fantastic. Oh, it's definitely yeah. happening. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to it. I feel like the idea fairies gave it to me and I can't <laughs> ignore that idea. No, no, so no, it's, it's, yeah. it's come into your, you know, yeah. it's come into your, your consciousness. Yeah. It has to be executed. Yeah. yeah, no, I hear you. Cool, sorry, you were saying, Ben. Um, so let's join the two elements quickly, because this is actually something that I think I've done that is a little bit unique. Um, I'm just going to open up a different session here so that you can see, because they're the technical guys and they're the, and they're the creative guys, right? 
So some of you are artists and some of you are more technically oriented. Um, and I want to show you how in Ableton you can combine the two. Because this is something that I've noticed that no one seems to know to do. And yes, there have been some technological parameters that have held people back. But at the same time, I go, like, that's no excuse. And this is what I was kind of saying to the technically minded people. It's as much your responsibility to push forward. Okay? You are going to come here and you're going to learn on the technology that the college has that's available to you that like, is basically at the forefront of what technology is, is, is doing globally, which is incredible because you're at a facility that's affording you to do that. But that's not what you guys need to know. You must have that as your foundation, and it's very important, and it's wonderful that you're being taught those foundational things. But your responsibility as both artists and, technology and, and tech guys, um, sorry, I hope you don't mind if I just keep using guys as a... Tech people. Anthropological kind of like Folks. broad spectrum <laughs> thing. Um, it's as much your, it's both your responsibility to push forward. Um, I've been doing this now for this methodology. I've been doing it for like eight years. I, I'm still the only person that does it, and I don't understand why. And he shares it with everyone. Like, I, no, it's no secret. I, I take a recording studio on stage. And like people are like, oh, okay. Like, so what that allows me to do, and I'll just, I'm going to pull up Jules's vocal channel here. Jules, sorry, you're going to get exposed harshly here. Okay, and I'm going to open up all the plugins that I use live. Auto tune. Oh, by the way, he has tuned me to the wrong key before oh, shush, in a man. song. <laughs> that was an interesting experience. How is that relevant to this? Well, it's, it's, it was horrible for me. <laughs> sucky for you, maybe. Okay. So, and there's a compressor and there's a limiter there, which you can see. And there's actually a vocoder here as well, which is kind of handy. Okay. So basically what I did is I was like, okay, well, I know how I want Jules to sound when I make the record. And because I'm the producer and the engineer in studio, and I'm the producer and the engineer technically in the band, I want to carry that forward. So now, a lot of you as artists might not have the opportunity to do that, but you also kind of do. And I've just done that with Will Lindley. We produced his show. We've created a really cool live setup for him. And what this has allowed me to do is to have a level of audio fidelity that is where I've been criticized for it sounding too much like the CD. And that, for me, is a win. Because I don't want to go to a show where the artist sounds terrible. I want to go to a show where my audience is going like, fuck, this is crazy. And sometimes artists need a little bit of help, so give them the help. On an Allen and Heath desk, you have like, you've got a compressor, you've got an EQ with some, hopefully with some sweepable mids, um, or at least there's some sort of parametric e EQ. And, and, then, and then it kind of like, and then it kind of ends. With Ableton, you can basically create your own custom chain of plugins that will process whatever the signal it is, whether it's the vocal, whether it's the bass, the guitar, saxophone, and you can sculpt and shape it with the tools that are not available to you on a traditional desk. And as an artist, if you're a singer, who are, are there any singers here? Okay, there's one, cool. If you're a singer and you know how your vocal should sound, you can take this enterprise and go like, cool, I'm gonna put these plugins in place because I know this is how I want my vocal to be, and I'm gonna send this signal to front of house. So the engineer still has it, but you still have a little bit more control. So what I do is basically I run Ableton, in real time with a super low buffer setting through a sound card. So all my inputs are coming into the sound card, going through Ableton and being processed and spit back out to front of house. My engineer that I tour with then has iPad control of Ableton. But you don't have to do it like that. You can get a sound card with multiple outs that spit it to, to front of house and you can have it traditionally spread out on the, on the desk with all the different things. But you're, what you're getting to do is you're getting to process your ingredients. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I always use food analogies the ingredients of what your band is in a way that like maybe a 150,000 Rand Digico desk D with yeah. waves like so plugins would, would be able to do. Essentially though, what you're doing is what uh, 
Avid or DigiDesign back in the day did with Venue, yes. where what they were trying to do, and actually, believe it or not, and please don't judge me when I say this, but uh, Black Eyed Peas is one of the main reasons, well, not main reasons, but it was one of the, the bands that helped shape this evolution of this of, of Venue, because uh, as cool as Fergie is, not the best vocalist in no, the world, lo- lo- and um, no. everyone actually wants to hear the CD replicated when you go to a show. Let's be honest, we've become that, and, and, it, and you hear some imperfections, but you do want that essentially, you want a full experience, you've paid for it. Yeah. And so what Venue allowed them to do is essentially what you're doing, where you're running the studio vocal processing in real time at the show which we can now do with the S, uh, S6 Live and, and, and Pro Tools already. You don't need a venue anymore. But essentially, that's exactly what you're doing. And it's an amazing, amazing thing because you've got ultimate control. And everyone's happy. And if you don't have that desk, you can do it with a very, very small sound card in Ableton. So mm. we're doing it with Will. He's got a Scarlett 2i, what's it, 2 in, 2 out. And yeah. we're managing to do it yeah. on No that. excuses, So there's guys. no excuse of like going like, oh, yeah, but Ben, you're using like crazy like Mac and like sound card. And like, well, I am, but Will's not. You know, and, and we're doing the same things. And like on Black Friday, he bought Waves Autotune. It was like $29. It's like it's an investment in his future. I got him to buy L2, so I'm a master bus. I've got uh, a great, great fab figure. filter. By the way, just start saving now. <laughs> um, because there is nothing better than fab filter. Did they have their first special? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it is their first time. They don't like giving special. discounts because they don't need a gear discount. <laughs> um, yeah. But the beautiful thing about it, and I'll just show you quickly by playing some music here. So let's just play a bit of track. Let's speed that up a bit. And I'll show you. I'll show you what's super cool about it, okay? This is what I love about FabFilter. For all you engineers out there, and I love love going to gigs, and then the front of house engineer goes like, yeah, yeah, he's like, like, I can hear his feedback at like like 800 or like around there, (laughs) okay? And you're like, no dog, I'm, I'm looking on the spectral <laughs> analyzer here. <laughs> it's not a fucking 800. <laughs> you're an idiot. Stop trying to convince people that you know what you're doing with your ears. Like, you know, because also bear in mind that in a room you might have feedback at, you oh, might actually be right that there's piece. feedback at 800, but like where he's standing, it's, it's not actually, you know? So anyway, um, <laughs> but this is what I love about Fab Filter is you can isolate. So if you need to know what's wrong, you can go and hear what's wrong. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if I sit here, it'll eventually build up and it'll show me. And this is, what's, this is what is so absolutely deliciously divine about, about this. And you can go like, oh, okay, cool. Well, it's showing you where the peaks are. Like, listen, we're not all blessed with perfect pitch and the most incredible ears. Not all of us are going to be able to spend years of our life tuning our ears to the point where we like know what 1K sounds like. Like, there's a picture, guys. Stop trying to like limit yourself with what the gear can't do and start implementing elements of technology. Take a risk. Take your laptop or your computer to the gig. Plug it into the desk. Most of the desks have now got built-in sound cards. Run the master bus through your computer because, geez, I mean, I think basically every single computer in the world now, so long as you're looking after it and you don't have like a million files in your downloads folder, that's something none of you should have, just by the way. Um, Oops. Dun, dun, dun. You can run your master bus through this. And you don't have to use this. You can use Ableton's, Ableton's EQ8 is also brilliant. You know, it's a great EQ. It also has a spectral analyzer on it. So you can see what's going on. Oh, look. It's not quite as good as FabFilter, but there it is. And you know what? You can also have a thing with little headphone tickly gong. Oh, look. You can listen to, you can listen to the, the bit that you need. OK? And for for artists and for for techs, it's important to know this stuff because you can better tailor your sound to be the way that you want it. You don't need to be the expert in it. You just get like the rough one. Like you're like, okay. Because there's there's no two venues sound the same. Yeah. It's a a thing. Like. 
Then we, we, I see a warehouse and a, a tin roof, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh we're going to work hard. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. then there's this plugin, which most people. Do. So, when we go touring in Europe, we get to like meet all these different producers, and like it's such a wonderful opportunity. And this is why I said like you guys need to collaborate more across the spectrum. Start spending more time working together on different things. Don't worry about what the, the college is expecting you to do. You guys initiate it, because what you learn from each other are the little things that like, you wouldn't necessarily have spoken about. Like, how many people here know what Kickstarter is? Cool. One, two, three. Three. Cool. Kickstarter is like the sickest little side chain compression tool. It's flipping brilliant. You can use it in so many different ways, but it's, it's great as like a kick ducker. So it's going to do the whole it's ducking awesome. thing, you know? And it's just a lovely little, I didn't know about that plug until I went to Europe. And I saw like one of my DJ friends using it. And I was like, hey, that's really handy. I've been using Ableton's compressor with a side chain with, a, with a, like a muted MIDI kit. And I've been like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah? Kickstart also has a free demo where you, it's, uh, if you can only use it on one track in the entire session, but you can just render that out. Exactly, and then keep using it. Such a good point. That's how I discovered this plugin. Okay, This plugin is probably one of the coolest plugins I've ever come across. It's called Trackspacer. It's made by Waves Factory. And basically what it is is a real-time multi-band compressor. It is not even really that. It's like, it's like a real-time dynamic EQ. So what you can do is you can root, and this is what I love about Ableton now, is that side-chaining is super easy. So you can root anything to it. So I'm just going to send Jules there. Now, there's not going to be any vocals coming through on Jules. Um, so let me send, I'm actually going to send another track there. So I'm going to send track one. Okay. Isn't that going to sound really weird? Uh, no, because it'll, what it'll do, it'll just show them what. Okay. Okay. So now what it's doing is I've put this plug in on the bus group of how I've grouped all of my instruments and my backtracks and all of that. I put that on, onto one channel. And then I've routed a signal that I want to pull out so that, it, so that that signal has more clarity. So basically, what this plugin does is it goes, cool, I'm, I'm sitting on top of this bus. And what I would normally do is root Jules' vocal there. And so whatever note Jules is singing, it's going to duck. So much like the way the Kickstarter just does this compression thing, Trackspacer will carve out, which is why it's called Trackspacer, it'll carve out space in your tracks. So if you watch it going there, basically the source material is actually this, which is why you can see it's like a very like narrow sort of element. That is now what is being pulled out of our fading mix. So if I turn this plugin off, Let's, let's really pump it so you can hear it working really hard. You see what it's doing? It's pulling out all of that. So now, but it's doing that in real time. So in this instance, what you could do is you could root your vocal, which is what I do, to track spacer, and it'll pull out all of the frequencies of your vocalist. So if you've got a vocalist who's struggling to cut through in the mix, you implement this, the next thing you know, the vocal is shining there. You've got no problems. You're not having to gain stage hectically because you've got a little get out of jail card here. And this is what I mean, guys. Like, start figuring out ways to implement the technology that's available to you. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, it, it is. I think the best description for it is a dynamic EQ because what it's doing is it's listening in real time and it's going, if she's going, it's going to pull yeah. out, you know, who's got perfect picture? Anyone? Definitely okay, cool. Not, Whatever yeah. la, la is, let's, let's call it uh, 933 hertz. It's probably not that. Um, <laughs> it's going to pull 933 hertz out. Not out, just down. No, so it's, yeah. it's ducking. So you can it's, see the amount here. So yeah. it doesn't, like, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't affect the track. The track Dramatically. sounds great, mm -hmm. but it gives enough of a, like, a dip that my vocal it's just can giving, It's just giving you through. space for your vocal to cut yeah, through, which it, is so essentially often, amazing. The, that's so often the problem, especially with live, even in recordings, but it's just like everything fighting for the same, for that same frequency band. And yeah. That's another little yeah. thing that... Uh, and from we have, sorry, we have saxophone as well, so often me and the sax, mm. you're, we like the same. We can clash. So yeah. what I do with saxophone 
is I use, it's actually not dissimilar, I use ProQ3, which has got a really cool feature. Does anyone have FabFilter plugins? One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Five, six, yeah, cool. Okay, so a really cool thing with FabFilter, okay, is, and, and with the Q3, is that it's, they've now brought in the ability to make nodes dynamic. Oh, wow. So this is like, it's like a shittier version of Trackspacer because it's, it's not going to move around, but you can trigger the dynamic compression, or, which would sort of be like a, a triggering a multiband compressor. But it's, what's great is that you can have it in an EQ. So you don't have to have an EQ and a multiband. You just have an EQ. So you make it dynamic. You've then got your range over here. So you can drop it down and say, cool, that's how far I want it to dip down. And then you can click turn off auto. You click the side chain button. And now that band will be cued by whatever side chain you have. And this is what's so cool about Ableton, guys, is that like, you can use this like the best mixing desk in the freaking world. And bless all the Digicos and the Avids and like all of the, the like cool fancy stuff, you can do this on anything. So you can patch it back into your desk. So you can have your laptop, your little Sapphire two in, two out, and you can go like, cool, uh, thank you, uh, sound technician, I'm gonna run my vocals in here, and then you can have my signal into the desk on channel one. Please keep it flat, no EQ, no compression, stuff off, I'm handling that and you can process your things like this so that you can get an added level of quality for the audience because that's what matters, remember? Cool. Questions? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's throw it out there. Anybody? Yeah. So, uh, no, there are no latency issues with live. So long as your downloads folder is empty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So when I'm running a sound, uh, like I've gone through a couple of different sound cards, and I will tell you that like this session, which has got whew, quite Silly, a lot of, yeah. it's got quite 17 channels of stuff, and I'm doing like crazy stuff. I'm doing like automation. I'm doing like we would need to have like a proper Ableton session for me to really unpack this. But we've got video elements. There's all sorts of different things that Ableton is processing here because I think it's the most incredible program in the world. Um, True that. We've got all our in-ear sends happening in real time. I've got talkback mics, I've got click for the band, I've got tempo changes, I've got auto-tune changes, all of these different elements that are, Drum are being cued. Um, loads of live instruments. Loads of live instruments, Vocals. obviously. And so I have to go with a slightly more expensive sound card. I've used uh, Antelope Audio, which work really well. I've used RME, which work really well. I'm going to keep listing expensive sound cards here. I'm very sorry. I've used, um, Motu. I've used Motu, which are not as expensive. And Motu are actually, so sadly, weirdly not present in this country. Yeah. But they're incredible sound cards. Like, absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, I've used Focusrite. Focusrite are a little bit more tricky. But there's a wonderful thing in Ableton. It's called driver error compensation. So watch what happens. This is what we're looking for. In every single instance where you're trying to do what I've just spoken to you about, you're looking at overall latency. Da, 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 da. Oh, fuck me. Look at that. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Stop. No, no, you're allowed to. It's fine. So I can compensate for the amount of latency because Ableton is clever. It's going to put more pressure on your machine, but it's going to allow you to get that zero latency level so that you can do this. But Guys, start playing. Because like, also the new Macs, like, yes, Macs are still very expensive, but they're not what they used to cost. Like, the M1s have come down a bit in price, the, you know, like, and the if new... If you're a and producer or, a, or, a, or a, a front of house engineer, you need to be thinking of these things as your instruments. Yeah, yeah. as your investments. You know, like, the guy who's going and spending, like, 20 grand on a Fender Gibson or, like, 30 mm. grand on, like, some, like, expensive microphone, mm. like... You guys also need to like yeah. fend for yourselves. And the, the M1 chip is just extraordinary. I mean, yeah. we used to put, uh, Ben had a previous version of a MacBook Pro and we used to have to, because we run this computer so heavy on CPU, we used to have to put bags of ice underneath the yeah. machine all yeah. the time on top of the CDJs, 
DJs mm. loved us for it. Oh yeah. And you know, and like it would happen regularly. Yeah. Like if the gig was if the gig was over 25 degrees Celsius in the room temperature, we'd have to put our computer on ice every time without fail. So yeah. now little, little little get out of jail card if you're in the studio and your laptop is like making a bit too much noise. Yeah, ice packs. Get some ice bricks from yeah. the fridge. The whole chassis of the laptop is aluminium for a reason. It's yeah. the heat, heat sink. Yeah. yeah, but these new ones. Yeah, they're. They don't get hot. I mean, I I just yeah. bought the I just bought the the, the MacBook Air uh, yeah. which M1, is, which is brilliant. By so the way. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant laptop. And 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 I've had I had how the, much was that? Uh, sixteen. Th uh, which just on just over sixteen grand. Okay, so now. I Hi. Whatever <laughs> your whatever your life situation is, sixteen thousand rand for a machine that can potentially change mm. is worth it. Because but but. You have to implement it. Because I guarantee you, if you're a front of house engineer or a rap artist or an amateur piano artist or uh, just a, a, a one man band or whatever it is, you could start doing stuff with that machine that no one before you could do. Guys, we like, it's the whole landscape has yeah. changed like as of like two months ago when this thing arrived. Like, I'm not joking, this is like a new era. You just need to start uptaking into it. Yeah. And I get that it's a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But it will be a game changer, and it's a game changer from the perspective of like all of the desks that you guys are learning on, yeah. bro. Those aren't going to be here in like five <laughs> years' time. You're going to arrive. There's going to be a patch bay and a USB cord, yeah. and that's it. You're not going to come in. There's going to be like a desk with like EQs and shit. They're going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is retarded. Because no, it is retarded. Well, I, not you know? yes. No, I it know. is retarded. Like you've got like lows, mids. Sweepables and, and tops. Yeah. Are you joking? What the hell am I meant to do with that if I've got <laughs> feedback? Like, no. It's not going to be like that. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that the world is not going to change yeah. because this is what you're learning on. It's a fantastic foundation. It's going to give you the overall understanding. But your job is to move this industry forward. So but get the what, tool that's going to help you to do that. But also what's quite interesting, so... I own, I've got four functioning MacBook Pros at the moment, right? <laughs> uh, I, no, 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 bear, bear with me, just hang on. Oh, I'm not, like, just never sells the old one. No, no, this is it. So, so I've, got, I've got one from 2008, which runs Pro Tools 8, Ableton Live 8, and is so stable, it's still running 10.5.7 as an operating iOS. It can't get on the internet, which is fantastic, and it's stable as hell, and it never dies. So that's cool. Uh, it cost me 28,000 Rand. Okay, it's 15 inch, it's 2008, right? Yeah. Then I've got uh, another MacBook Air, that's irrelevant, I don't do anything on that. Um, then I've got the, uh, the, the previous 2013 I used to run this whole show, by the way, on the MacBook Air. That's how I found out yeah. about the ice. No. Because the MacBook Air doesn't have an internal There's fan. no heating. <laughs> yeah. So it uses its chassis. Yeah. But yeah, so basically that was 24 and a half thousand rand, still going strong, that's done thousands and thousands and hours of gigs. Um, and the MacBook Air M1, same 256 uh, um, solid state oh, right, drive, right. the whole works, 8 gigs RAM, is almost 10,000 Rand cheaper. In a, in, a, in, a, in a time where inflation's gone up. So. Exactly, and, and now I'm running, I'm Ableton, okay, I'm 10, not 11, but it's fine. It's running Vital, it's running Massive, it's running uh, Pap and Predator, it's running all of it. And you know, you're looking at 20, 25, 30 tracks, no problem. And only then does it, and then I can do exactly what you've done and change the. Mm. It's, it's wild. A, it's a huge investment, guys. Um, it's wild. And it's, like, not, it's not to like say to you, like, like Max. <laughs> like, go Mac. But go Mac. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I know some of you love PC, and like PC has a wonderful place, but it doesn't have a place in the live environment because their audio codecs are just terrible. I've taken machines that are like four times as powerful as my Mac and tried to make them run. And Ableton as an goes experiment, like, yeah. the whole top part here, up here, just yellow, just bright the yellow the whole way. Brah, can't do that. Everywhere and, yeah. Like, sorry, Windows, you done. Oh. <laughs> it's, yeah. okay. I, I, just like the, I just like the idiot proof operating systems. They've hidden everything and no one can delete page files. That's all I'm saying. Which is also handy. <laughs> um, um, okay. Cool. Next uh, question. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Which? Auto -tune uh, so we use Melodyne for the finesse tuning of like an album because mm -hmm. the way that you can tweak the nuances, you're not going to destroy 
You're not going to destroy the vocal. I could be a professional melodyner for a living. I Jules love could it. Be, yeah. It's like it just. She's really like, good at it. It's also just so relaxing. I find it's the most like present task that you can do. So no one can distract Jules has turned you. it into like a it's meditation. It's like meditating for me. I love it. I just sit there like. Ooh. And then I use Waves Waves Tune Live, um, which is really reasonably priced. I think it's twenty nine dollars at the moment. Actually, it's still twenty. I think they, as yeah. much as they tell you it's a Black Friday special, I think it's just an everyday no, special. It's also been extended, by the way. Yeah. I worked in a session um, yesterday, two days ago, where the guy he was using Antares. Is it, is it do Antares? Antares do one as well. I don't I don't know that one so well. He he swears by that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and Melodyne's still better than Notorious. So. Yeah, what do you want to use it for? T painting. Are you wanting to T pan? Yeah. Then go with this one. Yeah. You can hard because tune it. all you do is you just you just pump the speed, mm. and you pump the note transition, yeah. and it's you know, and it's a vibe. <laughs> but like just bear in mind <laughs> that a lot of other people have already done that, so it ain't going to be as fresh as you're hoping it to be. If you want to do something fresh, pull up one of these bad boys yeah. and do say, some cool vocoding. And it's free on Ableton. It comes built in and you can and do And the stuff everything. that you can do with this plugin makes Autotune look retarded. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can play the, you can play the, the notes to follow. Yeah. Yeah, or even speak. Or to like take chords and voice them out across multiple tracks and then use the same vocal tape. You and you yes. are going to do a session together. <laughs> <laughs> because you have an agenda of what you're wanting to achieve you know, and you know how to achieve it. Yeah. And between the two of you, he's going to ask you to do things that like, you'd be like, no, it's not what I want it to sound like. So you're going to learn something and you're going to learn something. So share numbers. That's your project. You do realize Ben is going to like Chase contact up on you, me yeah. and check. If you check don't send me the project and, yeah. and go like, yo, check what we made, <laughs> listen to this magic, we've invented the new T-Pen. Like, I'll be super bleak. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Who's next? Anyone else? Don't be shy, guys. We've only got them a couple more minutes. I'll ask a question. So from working traditionally on electronic music production throughout the years, how was it recording your first acoustic album and reworking your old tracks? Oh, this is such a dream. Obviously, it was documented throughout Facebook from your... So from my perspective, um, as a producer, and I use that word in terms of like how a traditional producer would be, which is a guy who generally sits in the room and steers the ship, and the new age producer thing, which is basically the guy that now has to do everything, um, I got to do the first one for the first time. Like, when we're making music and I'm the producer, I'm having to make every single ingredient, whether it's the bass, the keys, you know. I'm reaching out to my bandmates for stuff, but ultimately I'm, I'm having to like collate all of that stuff and put it in. Working with a band was just, and this is where also there's a, a wonderful opportunity. There's lots of electronic music, there's lots of like hip hop, there's lots of uh, house music, I'm a piano music. Um, there's nothing like human feel. Like? Nothing. No one's incorporating enough human elements. And, and the thing is, is that the audience actually wants those human elements back. So, like, there's a huge gap for whoever's, like, making music right now to com combine, sorry, combine and electronic. And also, and like, I think what was so cool is that he could, he would, you know, the, literally the band was there, and they're so proficient at what they do. They'd be playing something, like, you know, whatever. It would sound like Simon and Garfunkel. Then he'd be like, nah, guys, can we do it, like, Bossa Nova style? And literally, like, they have a little chat for, like, a 30 seconds, and then they're five, six, seven, eight. It's, they're playing the song in that style. So it was, you know, like, being like, able to... It's and really that's insane. the thing is also where you can't polish a turd comes in, is like work with people that are really good. And that's what I was saying about like, he sounds like he really knows what he's talking about. No, Josh stuff. really knows. He's going to be really about. good. Like you're going to get like a level of, of like result where you're like, ooh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, this is pretty dope. Um, but yeah, to, to sum it up, it was magical. It was like, it was like having the best VST synths. <laughs> and then, like, I didn't even have to, like, play anything in to try and find, like, a cool idea. I just poke them. And it's I'd be like, like, no, that's a bit shit. Come, give me something better. better. Like, do better. Do more. Do less. Um, and that's a really fun way of being able to make music. Look, it's expensive because you've got to pay those people if they're not, like, in your band. Um, or you don't have some kind of collaborative arrangement with them. But, like, 
But yeah. you've also you've also been fortunate over the years to have some incredible people in your band. I mean, let's yeah. let's talk about like Raven. Oh, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Guy, the guy's a yeah. legend. Yeah, yeah. He is. You know, and and it's now you've got Tim. Yeah. And yeah, no. <laughs> it is. It's so. it's just it's just so cool to be able to collaborate. Collaborate and share. You know, and I think in South Africa there's this weird culture of, and I think it comes from the top down. There's certain artists that have implemented this over the years from the beginning of this like. Wow, if I'm doing well, then if, if I'm not doing well, or if someone else is doing well, I'm doing less well. And it's like this limited amount of success and happiness in the world. And it's just not true. You know, if, if everyone. Going overseas, sorry to interrupt. Going overseas, like, if we were doing this talk at a college, like, every single one of you would have already made like four or five songs with someone else. Or is collaborated it? in some shape or form on, on some other thing. It's not a reflection on the college, because. The college is going like, guys, the facilities here, like, yeah. do it. It's, it's a reflection on you and a reflection on the culture that we have yeah. in our yeah. industry. Which so is, it's also which your responsibility to change that. What's yeah. mine is mine and it's mine alone. It's yeah. not a good, yeah. Sorry. So no. it's the next collaboration with the Kiffness. Yeah. With Dave from the Kiffness. He's not really making... He's not, he's he's not, really not doing, being very he's collaborative. Changed right? he's, he's changed <laughs> he's his direction. He's been super collaborative no, he, with he, YouTube. He, he's, he's loving YouTube and TikTok at the moment and that's it. Yeah. 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 If it's got four paws and a bushy tail, he's <laughs> collaborating <laughs> with us. You know? yeah. uh, but no, we do have a collaboration in the works with um, uh, Kasango. Yeah, I'm working with Kasango. I don't know if you guys know yeah. him. He's quite a new, new artist, producer yeah. on the scene. And we're doing a song with, with Sanal. And we did a summer, which is like the song at the moment. So he's, he actually made the can, beat for that. What, can, I, can I ask you about... Yeah. So I accidentally phoned you while you were kind of really busy, and you still <laughs> talk to me. But thank you for that. Um, Writing school songs. Yeah. How, yeah. That, how did that actually turn out? If you don't mind, I know you guys are in a Have rush. Have we stopped streaming it? Okay, I can't play it for you. Okay, well. Oh, well, don't play it. It doesn't no, no. It's a, no, it's, I can I play If we a, stop streaming, I'll play it for them. It's basically, um, it's, no, nah, it's, it needs a lot of work still. Don't play it yet. Um, it's a, it was a really cool project that we, you know, obviously we've um, had a little bit more time in our hands and um, some really good people have come come forward with some cool ideas um, to support the South African music industry. And this is one of them. It's a, the UCT is doing an online high school. The, the whole face of education Well, Valencia, Valencia, the Valencia Institute has made yeah. a new online high, high school. school so I don't so know if you guys know this, but yeah. next year, there are already a thousand students who are not placed in a school because there are no That's placements right. in schools. Like, that's the situation. So, it's like, terrifying. we have a lot of children for some reason, I'm not sure, like I guess lockdown, lockdown. no, it's, it's pre-lockdown I guess, <laughs> but like we have a lot of children and not enough schools. And so the guy, the, there's this team who made a, who started an online school called the Valencia Institute and they have done a collaboration with UCT and they made the UCT online high school. And they approached us and they were like, listen, we started this thing, it's gone crazy, we've got like already 3,000 kids who are first who intake, signed yeah. up in their first intake, it's actually now gone way past that. I think it's on like 9,000. Well, it should be. Within the first couple um, of years, it's going to be like 100,000 children. Yeah. So it's massive. So it's, it's a wonderful way also of like of leveling the playing field because it's like it doesn't actually matter where you are um, and they make sure that you're connected. So it's, it's not like, you know, if, if, if you're in a situation where you can't necessarily afford a laptop or connectivity, um, they help you. But basically, the level of the, of the, of the course and the tutorship is such that like you basically are getting a, a, an education that is, you know, second to none. Yeah. Uh, and they came to us and they were like, "Listen, make the song. Like, we really want to do something that is collaborative and representative." Um, and so, and they gave us some very interesting um, reference tracks. <laughs> we were like, okay. "Make it, make it representative and collaborative." Can it be like Uptown Funk and like uh, Bruno Mars? <laughs> You're like, uh, no, I'm joking. No, no, it was really cool. It was a, it was a, a great, um, it was a great like challenge for us, I think, because we like had. How to, do you write a school song? A school song's timeless. You know, yeah. it has to be. For, everyone has to have access to it. it has My to be school song was in Latin. In ten yeah. years yeah, from it's now. Not a good, not a good like <laughs> ground basis. And then it was, and then the, the artists they want on it. Um, Shekinah, Youngster CPT, Good Luck, and Msaki. So it's yeah. quite a diaspora of artists yeah. uh, to fit into one song and make it iconic and anthemic. So we've been doing that. And now, we, as another layer, we've included the first trial learners that are on the, on the first 
trial oh, of the school. So that's they who you were recording yesterday. Yeah, we were at UCT yesterday yeah, recording awesome. them in the hall. It was pretty right. epic, yeah. Most incredible hall acoustics so, there. Wow. Yeah, that, it is. So, yeah. Wow. So that's what we've been up to yeah. in it's the last couple of months. Absolutely amazing. I, I actually, I, and also, well, we've got a, I mean, myself personally, I've got a long history with like re- youngster through the Red Bull and everything. Yeah, obviously. of course. And then obviously with Kay being here. Oh, he's here. incredible. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, I didn't actually, to be, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I didn't really know his music and then we got <laughs> to work with him and I was like, whoa. So you I'll tell you, I'll tell you a really cool story. We, we used to have a, a collaboration, O2C, O2C, O2 and CBT, but the, him and I, and um, we played a Rocking the Daisy show one year um, on the Red Bull stage or the Electronic Dome, whatever you want to call it. And uh, in the middle of it, he was just like, yo, just run that beat. And I just kept this beat looping off Ableton. And he's like, yo, somebody just, everybody just, and he does this all the time. I mean, it's old school now, like, but he's amazing when he does it. But there's like 10,000 people there or whatever. Everyone's holding up stuff from lighters to joints to like, uh, you know, caps or yeah. like, you know, bra. And also he literally spat like a minute, two minutes, three minutes, something like that. He just went on the beat, just loop. And he, he looked at every single person, every single thing. And like made Worked it flow. It his, was the and, and you just sit there and, and, and everyone's minds are blown. Yeah. And you're going like, how the hell am he I going to follow he, this? He is. He is. <laughs> a, he is we we, a we call him voice. a wordsmith. He's not a. He's not a rapper. He's a wordsmith. No, he's, he's, yeah. he's amazing. He's the really words he came up with and like the phrases and the depth to the and I was like, yo. You know? Not to not to do uh, you know not to like kind of label him in a box, but one thing is uh, uh, I don't know if anyone ever seen the interview where um, uh, Marshall Mathers Eminem. Um, it's a 60 minute interview uh, and he's sitting in the studio. And, um, and the guy's like, how do you get stuff to rhyme with stuff? And this is exactly how young he is as well. Like, Riyadh's like, he's amazing. Like, he'll look at a thing and like, like Eminem said, like the word orange has nothing that rhymes with mm. it. But it's not how you say orange. It's how you say orange. Or, you know, and the way you put the inflection in it will then give you something yeah. to rhyme. And that's exactly what Young did. Oh, and, uh, it hurts my brain. No, it really is. And I, it, <laughs> but, that example <laughs> is a, but that example is a great sort of showcasing of... of of how you can change something because you're creative, mm. you know? An accountant is just gonna be like, no, there's nothing that, <laughs> that, that can work with orange. Yeah. Your guy's jobs is to figure out mm. something that will. And the, and the thing is, is that it, the beautiful thing is that your minds can do that. It's, like, it's an incredible thing. I what? have to go. Yes. I, oh, I, sorry. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, we have run over and I am yeah. so appreciative, but you have to No, go. it's super cool, I guys. Do, Thank I you. Do. It was really fun. Thank so what you. I'm what I'm going to do, and I will attempt to do this in a short, like at next term at some point, if you don't mind, is if you have a space, and and I hope, and my hope is that I phone you and you're like, dude, it's gonna have to wait because the shows are flooding in. Oh, that's so, what we want. I, I so hope so too. please understand <laughs> if you say no, it's a good thing. Uh, but we we need to do this again, and I'd love to do that uh, if we ever got a chance to do that in depth Ableton because I think it's just amazing. My favorite program, used it since Iteration One. It doesn't take away from the other programs, by the way. Like no, we teach other it things here are really doubt. good. Pro Tools is amazing yeah. for stuff. Uh, making this acoustic album, actually, I got the first time to really kind of work in Pro Tools, and I was like, wow, the fidelity yes. is different. Yeah, I'm not saying it's better. It's just different. different. <laughs> yeah. But you can calm vocals now on yes. Ableton. <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter. Huge game changer. I used to be like, I used to have to, every time I would do a vocal, I would have to reteach myself logic because I would forget how to use it just so I could calm, uh, swipe, you know. That's kind of the same with everyone. It's yeah. illogical, but I'm not going to uh, be that guy. <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy, but it's true. But guys, I cannot thank you enough. And I really, um, I hope this can be the start of, of something yeah. where we have a lot more of it. But we'll talk about that later. But for today and for this, thank you very much for making That's yourselves pleasure, available. Man. Thank you for if everything. There, thank you, guys. If there's anyone who wants to ask a question privately or whatever, just slide into our DMs on Instagram. We always read them, check them. If there are any questions that you didn't want to ask out loud, awesome. happy to answer. Do you want to share tracks? You yeah, want some honest feedback? Oh gosh, so that's, a, that's a can of worms. <laughs> no, no, no! Strap don't, in. Don't, <laughs> you are you are prepared already. Yeah. You are yeah. more than capable, and and like you'll be fine. There's nothing I can say that you're either gonna, not going to disagree with or agree with. Yeah, and if cool. you disagree with it, that's also great because cool that too. means yeah. you have conviction in what you've done. Yeah. And just because like, some little dude over here like, thinks that it's not so great, that doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, uh, be prepared because it's coming. I mean, uh, uh, Pascal and Pierce made the same mistake the other day by saying, just submit us anything. We love it. And everyone in his little eyes went ding. And I was like, oh, this is going to end. No, it's really fine. <laughs> it's really fine. <laughs> it might take a little while to get back to you, but we will get back to you. Yeah. But you guys, thank you. I really, Pleasure. from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And all the best with your next, uh, next chapter. I hope that it goes. 
And, and, like, and something to, I think is in closing words, like, if we can do it, and we're like very average. Like, seriously, we are not the pinnacle of anything that we do. We are um, masters of, uh, of all. Jack of all trades, Jack, masters of all. No, no, yeah, but you know that that saying's not actually quite right, eh? It no. actually has another no, part of it. The is There's a second, second part, part which actually makes it good. Because yeah. it's like, mas master of none, but blah, 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 which basically says it like, well, actually, it's the better way to do it. So. But if we can do it, you guys can do it. And you must so. go, please go and research. Just, just, just go and look at that saying, because I saw it on TikTok the other yeah. day. It was ambassador major with some lady actually wrote it down. And actually, it's better to be a jack of all trades yeah. than a master. Oh, yeah, but we know this. We know It's this. more fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You can be an accountant if you really want to. That's true. You earn money, though.